Okay, so a warm welcome for Philip Sluzalek. Well, thank you very much. So I, I'm changing my hat now. So I, last half an hour I was talking about fireware, which is, uh, I'll talk about, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. Fiverr is like the core technology project in this large future internet initiative by the European Union. It's actually a 500 million, the, the entire thing is a 500 million project with a lot of money from the industry but also a lot of money from the, uh, from the European Commission. Um, now I'm changing hats to another project that is uh, taking place uh, within this future internet initiative and this is the FI content project. Uh, it's obviously about, con FI always stands for future internet, um, and um, content is about content, so gaming, um, video, and other things. Okay, so here's the, um, I'll start with a little bit of overview of the entire project, or program, actually. Um, so the future internet program actually consists of this FIWARE project, which provides the base technology. Big data, cloud computing, uh, advanced user interfaces and lots of others as well. On top of that, and we're here in 2014, beginning of 2014, on top of that, um, we have a couple of projects that are developing technology that is very specific for a certain market. Uh, let it be health, let it be transport, let it be food, let it be others. Um, manufacturing industry, for instance, uh, is, is another one, Fitman here. FI content, uh, introduce or addresses content in general, uh, 3D data, 2D video, um, and also the create, it's addressing the creative industry um, and the culture in, cultural communities. Um, oh, what I should mention here uh, is um, that both the technology foundation projects at the bottom but, and also the, the pink ones here on top of that um, we're building technology modules, as I just described them before, and, and we're making this technology uh, available so that other people can build on top of that. This is actually quite different. It's a novel way of approaching EU projects. Um, and then the 100 million euros that I've just talked about that will be made available to SMEs and, and what they call uh, web entrepreneurs, individual people, that want to build things is that third call, this use case expansion phase, as, as it's formally called in EU speak. Um, this is starting, uh, again, it's starting after the summer, so look out if you want to get a part of that money. If you want to build technology based on what we are developing here and what I will talking, we'll be talking about, look out for announcements in the second part, second half of this year. Um, so FI Content is actually a large project uh, from uh, very many different companies. Um, technical, so it's big companies like Technicolor, who's in the film business. BBC is part of that. Thales is a big company. Disney is a big company. Pixel Park, maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, we have uh, different research institutes. The Fraunhofer Institute is part of that. DFKI, which is next door here. Uh, ETH Zurich, a uh, large university, of course. And we have experimentation partners uh, like I2CAD uh, and uh, where is it? Imagine Lab, um, but ETH, for instance, we're, we're also doing large scale experiments with the technology that we're developing here. Uh, I cannot mention everyone here, so please forgive me. So, FI content is really driving innovation at the crossroads of content and media, as I said, 3D data, 2D data, video streaming, uh, TV, um, creative technologies, right? It's not only about technology, it's also about the people who build the technology. It's about um, networking, it's about computing, processing, and a lot about creativity and the people that have creativity and want to build things both on the technology side but also on the creative side. They want to create content uh, of different sorts and combine them with each other. FI content is actually structured into three different um, scenarios. Uh, the one is about social connected TV. This is where BBC, RBB, a TV station, German TV station is involved in. And it's all about bringing the traditional TV set together with the internet, uh, things like second screen technology, personalized TV and others uh, is a big topic. 
Uh, the other is the smart city services. This is all about offering services for the people and from the people that are living in cities. So this is the creative people or other people who want to build things, uh, contextualization, life information, but also include the, not just the people who live in the, in the city, but also those that are visiting the cities who want to find out about what's happening um, and maybe what has happened uh, in history. Um, but what I will talk about now in the next 20 minutes or so is this pervasive game part. Um, there's a lot about uh, augmented reality. I just showed you that augmented reality 3D graphics is actually handled, is built in the core project in, the F in Fiverr. Um, here we're essentially taking this technology, we we're building on top of it, we're enhancing it uh, specifically for games and large-scale virtual environments. Um, it's very much about combining the real and the virtual world, but also about toys uh, and, and uh, different sorts of games. I'll, I'll address this in a little bit more detail. So again, we will be I will be talking about the pervasive game part of FI content. So what is this pervasive game platform? The whole idea is that traditionally gaming is something that typically kids played in front of a computer maybe sitting in the basement or somewhere in a dark room with a bottle of Coke and a pizza next to them, okay? That is, a lot of people didn't like that, right? And people thought about, well, gaming doesn't have to be that way, right? So what if we could still have people play games, but actually not get them out of that? We have those mobile devices, so why can't you play in the real world, in the cities, in buildings, in other, wherever you go, um, so that's the whole idea, and the future internet makes all of this possible. We need the bandwidth, we need the connectivity um, everywhere to, to make that possible. So the idea is to break away from the game console and actually take gaming into the real world. Um, so bringing the game into, uh, into the real world with the mobile devices, with the internet connection that, that we now have available. Uh, and a key part of that is you don't want to just play on your mobile device and kind of right ignore the world around you by just looking at your small device. That that would not be the, the a big advantage, right? You you would be still out there, but you would not connect to the world around you. So a key part is to actually blend the virtual and the real environment into the gameplay and have a joint uh, experience here. So really play and then get people to actually play together, right? Maybe not only with your friends, but play with other people that just happen to be where you are and just want to play, have a, have a similar experience here. So when we started FI Content, and Disney is part of this, and they have great artists who draw concept art, uh, we thought about different things that we could do. And so here I have a ju just a couple of examples so uh, in the top left, who has played Lemmings, the gold, good old Lemming game? Yeah, I see a lot of hands here. So Lemming was, uh, you had small animals and they would do stupid things. You had to help them not die early. Um, but that was a 2D thing on a 2D screen, again, in your basement. So the idea would be, what if the Lemmings would be running around here and you would have to place the chair so they don't run off in the wrong direction? Um, so it really, I mean, right, we all would work together to guide them out the door or whatever the goal of the game would be. Um, another example is here at the top, right? Uh, what if you buy a toy, right? This is a piece of plastic, right? Um, of course, your imagination brings it to life, but what if, if you point your mobile device at that game, at, at that toy, at that plastic toy, it actually becomes life. You can see the, the seven dwarfs in this case. Uh, you can interact with them. You may be even able to talk to them um, and, and play games. And maybe you cannot just do this yourself, but your friend who has the same toy can do the same thing, either next door or next to you or, or somewhere else completely uh, on the other side of the world, maybe. Or maybe um, you can become a hero, right? Um, we, we match you and then we put on clothes um, and, and, and other gears and you can, you can essentially be a virtual hero. Um, or maybe more on the educational side, maybe you're sitting on the back of a camel in, 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 uh, in Egypt, um, and then 
your mobile device tells you about the history of the place and you can maybe play, uh, ask questions, you can interact with, with a virtual character that tells you more about the place and things like that. Many other things. But we, only, we didn't only look at uh, the professionals from Disney and, and other game studios. We had actually, I met, didn't mention Gobo, which is a game studio that's also part of the project. We did not only ask the professionals, but we actually went to game, um, uh, to universities that teach gaming. So here you actually see a group of game students. Um, and we asked them, what is, what, what, if you had all of this technology, what would you actually do? What would you want to play? Um, and so we had them working for days and we did multiple of those events and they came up with lots of interesting ideas. I can't go into all of those things, but mixing reality mixers about the mixing of reality and, and virtual world, like a network pet parade that could walk through Tsebit maybe, uh, and, and many other things. And um, at the end, we took all of those ideas, the ideas from ourselves and the ideas of all the students and other people that we talked to, we talked to a lot of people, we came up with a three-tire architecture, three different, principally different scenarios for gaming. Um, and so this is kind of where you can classify possible future games into. The one is this consumer product, right? You have a single small, maybe small object, and it's all playing with that object, bringing it to life with the new technology. That's the one side. The next one is the location-based installation. So here, right with the, with the object, you're in full control. You are many, maybe you're manufacturing the, pro the project or you know the, the project that is being sold by someone else and you can, you have, you're under full control. In the location-based installations, it's first of all, it's a larger environment, maybe 10, 15 meters around something. You can build, you can install something there, right? So you're under partial control of the environment. It's much larger much more complex already, uh, but you still have somewhat control. Um, and then the third tire is a citywide gaming. This is about playing in the entire city, and of course you cannot change the city, right? It's just as it is. Maybe you can bring, people can bring devices and, and other things, but, but that is as much as you can do. Um, and that's a very, very challenging environment to build games uh, with new technology, and, and that's what we're, what we're doing. So we kind of have built things for the Tire 1 and Tire 2, and we're currently uh, initial things, and we hope that the 100 million euros will get a lot of more people to build a lot of more good games and good game technology. Uh, we're mainly working on the citywide gaming right now. Um, so here's just a couple of those examples of stuff that we have built here for the Tire 1 consumer products. Um, and again, you can see some of the examples being shown there, and uh, Marcel, who will talk right after me, will go into a lot more detail of the type of games and types of technologies that we've been building here. But just as an example, this large gray ball that you see in the top left there um, is, um, is actually it's an object, but we, we take the object to get information about the lighting in the real world, right? You see that the light is kind of coming from the top right, um, and we, we, we're, we're building, the, or we're applying the same lighting for, to the virtual environments, and so the virtual objects actually look like if, as if they are in the real world uh, that, that you're filming with the augmented reality technology that I've talked about earlier. And all of that is working on mobile devices already. So the location, uh, the, the second tire is the location-based installation. Uh, so think about um, uh, in front of a movie theater, right? You still have these large uh, boards that uh, right, advertise the new movie. Uh, what if, if you are standing in front of this and someone points a mobile device, a mobile web device at you, um, you get hugged by that beer uh, you can take a photo of yourself uh, next to that or maybe next to Schwarzenegger or some other hero. Um, so this is actually technology that Disney uh, is apparently putting into products already. So this is technology that's been developed as part of this project, is already finding its way into, into real products. And you could build it yourself uh, based on the technology. All of this technology, again, is open source, available as open source uh, through the FI content website. Um, the citywide gaming is the most challenging one, 
And I thought um, instead of telling you myself, uh, I, there's this really nice video uh, that I just uh, want to show. I'll just give me a second. So this has actually been produced by uh, HP. It's called Roku's Reward. It's about this guy, this boy, um, who, uh, who gets invited to a game. Um, there's some move, there's some, some audio here, but it's not that important. I think you get the story like this. So it's using, again, using a mobile device. Um, uh, together with AR technology, he is uh, walking around the big city. We're replacing the big city with actually maybe a traditional uh, environment more. And then there is this big, right? Think about Pac-Man in 3D right in Frankfurt or in Hannover, right? Uh, there's hidden uh, treasures that are hidden uh, buttons that you can press to get uh, more information or get more data. You are fighting against others or, or, or competing against others in finding, in finding things, finding treasures. If you activate the right combination, the lock opens. And then the dream of young boys might actually happen or not. Okay. Worst. Okay, I, I think you get the idea. Again, we haven't produced this yet, um, but this is actually a, a movie that would be produced a couple of years ago by HP. Nothing, nothing of that, it's all a mock-up. None of that technology actually has been built for producing this video. So it's just a video that's been produced. Uh, we're building the technology to actually make that work, right? And make that work not in a special game engine, but make it work in your web browser on any device uh, that you might own. Quite challenging, so. Um, so here's, uh, so we, we haven't done nothing yet here, so we have, we've started. We actually are operating a couple of what we call, what, what is called hackathons. So we actually invite young people uh, who want to build games, who, who are into technology. We give them the tools and let them just build what they want. So here's what people actually have been building. This was a group of five students from the Nantes, uh, Nantes uh, University of Design, or I forgot the, the exact name. Um, uh, th that was a project they've worked on for about a day. Right? This was a one day, 24 hour hackathon. We gave them the tools um, and the, the game is a very simple, right? You can play it in every city. You walk around with your mobile phone uh, it detects traffic sign, like this stop sign here, and you can win the stop sign, right? You can make it your stop sign in the game if, uh, so it replaces the stop sign with a small game, right? So here, this is a hole into the universe, and some alien spaceship come out of the stop sign, and you have to uh, kind of shoot them, right? Uh, well, we can discuss whether that's a nice game, but anyway, that's the, that's the if, you are, if you are the leader, if you are winning against all the others, then this is your sign, right? And though now you can go and, and capture more and more signs in your city. You can build groups of people and, and right, uh, kind of build coalitions and so on. Um, so again, this is technology that was possible to be built in 24 hours thanks to, to all of this technology that we're developing here. And now we actually invited those five students. Um, uh, we're giving them a, a little bit of money so they can actually continue working on this and hopefully this will be a, a great game that will be hopefully be available to you pretty soon. Um, okay, so uh, what is the role of the pervasive game platform? So uh, the game platform is really the combination of the FIPPP technology, the, the FIWARE technology that I talked about earlier with specific game development tools um, that target existing gaming communities but also new, uh, a new business here. Uh, get rid of this one. Um, and, and we're getting a lot of the technology from the, from the FIWARE. 
Um, some of the technologies that we do provide, I just want to highlight them. Marcel will talk about um, some of them in, in a little bit more detail here. Uh, leaderboard, for instance, is keeping track of who is winning one of those signs, for instance. Uh, Reality Mixer and others are uh, advances on top of the AR technology that I've talked about earlier. So uh, just to give you an idea, uh, it looks a little bit complicated maybe, but the game platform is really the combination of the generic technology coming from Fireware, which is this bar, green bar at the bottom. So we're using a lot of those. And then we're adding a lot of what we call specific enablers on top of them. These together make up the game platform. Um, and then we're building games on top of that and, and demos and so on. But on the right-hand side, it's really you, right? It's you and your friends who can build applications um, just the same way as we're building them ourselves. And through this 100 million euros that the European Union will make available, you can actually get funded for doing this. Doesn't that sound great? OK, so we, we have the first release of our uh, technology actually available already that was released late last year. We're constantly um, adding to this. Uh, there will be new upcoming releases for at least one more year, if not uh, uh, more. And so you see some of the uh, keywords here of uh, technology that will come, in particular technology that makes this uh, real world uh, citywide gaming uh, uh, possible. Uh, we're also, not as much, um, uh, but uh, this will hopefully also increase much more, making game uh, assets available, 3D data sets, textures, animations. So it makes it uh, hopefully much simpler for you to get started because that, that takes a lot of time to build these things. Um, we hope that we can also uh, uh, get a whole new group of people. So the more people start building things and make their data also available, then it makes it very much simpler for others. So we're kind of trying to get this kick-started, uh, but please, everyone who wants to build on top of that, help us uh, make more assets available. Actually, at the Saarland University booth, which is kind of uh, roughly this way at the end of this hall here, we are showing XML 3D Repro, which is a database for 3D objects, um, which can be distributed across the internet. You just point a URL, and you're getting a 3D model, you can assign textures, you can grab animations from maybe different servers, you can combine them all together um, to have, for instance, an animated, nicely textured, uh, interactive 3D characters together with behavior. So um, it, it does certain things, for instance, when you click on it or, or, or do other things. Uh, so we're, we're trying not to just give you the technology, but also get you started on some of the assets. It's not a lot of data that we're providing yet, but hopefully, again, this will be coming uh, a lot more. Um, so what's next? Um, what's next is actually the job, not of myself, but of Marcel, who will talk about uh, a lot of the stuff that we have already built and provide you a little bit more on details on the technology. But before uh, we get Marcel on the stage, um, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And Reinhard is coming with the microphone. Yes, 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 yes. I'm coming, I'm coming. We left the plenty of so, time for oh. you to ask questions. Yes. So, so thank you very much, Philip. Uh, are there questions here? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.